Welcome back, traders and investors, to Betty Singer's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel L. Conan, along with Spencer Israel. And we're having some static on the line, but we also have Ethan Powell. He's a chief product strategist for Highland Capital Management. Ethan, how are you doing on this Wednesday morning? Joel, I am fantastic. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us here. Could you just give us a little bit of your, uh, your education and your background in the markets? Sure. Yeah, I'm a CFA and CPA, so the women really like that. Um, <laughs> got a master's in information systems on top of that. I've been in the business for around 20 years. i um, been working in Highland Capital Management for eight years. Uh, I'm currently the chief of product and strategy and also the chairman of our $6 billion retail fund board. Um, and as it relates to the conversation today, I'm also the name portfolio manager on our passively managed uh, bank loan ETF, ticker symbol SNLN. All right. Well, let's talk about investing opportunity in bank loans. Now, I know that might be kind of a, you know, a thing of the past there where we had in the financial crisis where, you know, the, the, the uh, class CMOs and the banks doing loans with other yeah. banks really led to, uh, led to a little meltdown in the market here. But uh, what mm -hmm. investing opportunities are you seeing in the bank loan market? Well, you know, it's interesting, Joel. Um, you know, we saw about $80 billion come into the bank loan market in 2013 in advance of what people thought was going to be a Fed rate hike in 2013. And today we're still talking about that. Um, since then, in 2014, we had $20 billion leave the space. So far, year to date, we've had about $40 billion leave the category as well. So obviously, people are speaking with their feet with regards to rate expectations. I mean, today, as we look at uh, sort of rate volatility, there's approximately 32% chance of a hike in December and a 50% chance of a hike in March. But I think what people are really losing sight of is the bank loan opportunity during a normal rate environment as well. For example, during the pre-credit crisis from 92 to 2007, floating rate loans had the highest sharp ratio uh, of any of these sort of major asset classes, including equity, high yield bonds, investment grade, corporates. Um, and then post-crisis, uh, it's also had the highest sharp ratio of a little over 3%. So, um, you know, from our perspective, it represents a good long-term hold. As it relates to the credit crisis, a lot's actually changed in the bank loan market since then. Uh, Joel, you, you referenced sort of the meltdown in the bank loan uh, market. You know, one of the things that happened is you had credit crisis lead to liquidity crisis in the bank loan category. And what, what really drove that was bank loans being a favorite security for highly levered vehicles like total return swaps and market value CLOs. Um, so at one point, I think it was J.P. Morgan did a study that there was around $350 billion of bank loans in these highly levered structures, and we're talking eight to ten times leverage. If you look at today, there's between 100 and 150 billion in leverage structures, and the leverage in those total return swaps, for example, is much more humane at around two to four times. So the backdrop for the asset class is much healthier. Um, and, you know, it's yielding almost 5%. Uh, it certainly acts as a great insulator in a portfolio for any potential rate volatility. Um, and, you know, we think it's a good time to position uh, your portfolio into the bank loan category and not, not uh, being withdrawing money out of it. Okay, you mentioned a term there, sharp ratio. Could you just start, you know, get, there's also some similar terms in the market. Could you just explain sure. that term for our listeners and uh, also uh, similar terms, you know, to measure, you know, the volatility or returns on the volatility? That's right. So sharp is really return per unit of risk, and it's measured as the annualized return um, over the standard deviation, and standard deviation in this particular case is uh, is really a proxy for market volatility. And if you look at the floating rate loan asset class, it, the standard deviation is around two percent annualized, both post crisis and pre crisis. During the crisis, of course, it was around a fifteen percent standard deviation, um, experiencing almost a twenty percent negative return. 
um, when you're talking about the drawdown from January of 2008 uh, to March of 2009. Um, so really what you're just comparing is, are you being compensated for the risk or volatility that you're assuming in your portfolio? And in the case of bank loans, you most certainly are. Um, because it represents kind of a tweener asset class between equities and uh, more traditional investment grade fixed income, um, because it is below investment grade, um, but it is higher on the priority scale in the event of a default, which um, has some real ramifications. Um, the bank loan asset class relative to the high yield bond asset class has around a 10% lower default rate, but more importantly, in the event of a default, it's got twice the recovery rate. And it's that recovery rate and uh, that c contributes to the stability of the asset class during periods of, of credit crisis. All right. So we got to we gotta talk about interest rates going up. And you mentioned those percentages. Yeah. It's kind of just been, you know, something that's been dragging on for quite some time here. I mean, still on a historical perspective, we still have very, very low interest rates here. So okay. even a small move up, I mean, is it really going to beat, you know, the yields on some of these, uh, you know, these high dividend paying stocks or something yeah. like your fund? I mean, and and uh, I don't know if I'm looking in the right place, but you know where's the inflation? Right, right, and and it's less to me about what um, policymakers do, and and much more about how the market responds to those policymakers. If you look back at the temper tantrum, um, you're talking about a hundred basis point increase in the ten year, um, really based off of you know ten words changing the FOMC <laughs> meeting minutes. Um, but what that did to the fixed income market was was just phenomenal. Bank loans were up 60 basis points during that May to July time frame. Um, but if you look at uh, munis were down 4.8%. Investment grade corporates were down almost that much. Um, tips were down uh, actually substantially more. Um, and so what you saw was fixed income instruments that have traditionally been a ballast in the portfolio, particularly retail investors, where they thought, hey, I'm going to put my my principal protected money into investment grade corporates. All of a sudden, they saw it down almost 5%. Uh, and I think the real fear is going forward that you've got rate volatility leading to behavior that forces or that pushes a lot of retail investors out of um, traditional safe havens for their money, including investment grade corporates and other longer duration fixed income instruments, um, which leads to a liquidity crisis. And, and that's a real fear, I think, in the marketplace. And I think bank loans provide a good insulating force from that potential for liquidity risk going forward and interest rate risk going forward. So uh, bank loans, you could break them down to a lot of different categories here. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the home loan market, uh, also, you know, the commercial lending market. Do you kind of pick and choose among the bank loans or do you try and favor, you know, the ones with, you know, the higher moody ratings? How do you differentiate? Yeah, yeah so um, this the bank loan asset class that, that we're invested in um, is – Bank loans that are used to finance large leverage buyouts from primarily private equity and um, strategic acquisition. So, for example, the Dell EMC acquisition is being financed in large part by bank loans. Um, it does not include more of your mortgage-backed or your commercial real estate-backed. Um, those are in separate sort of asset classes. So here you're talking about exposure to domestic LBOs, um, and generally below investment grade, um, the indices fluctuates between sort of a B plus to a double B minus. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely below investment grade. So that's why I say it's kind of a tweener asset class between equities and traditional fixed income because it is below investment grade, but it doesn't trade on interest rate risk because the it's floating rate in nature. And, the, and on average, the portfolio will reset its base rate every 45 days. So you don't get that interest rate risk that traditional fixed income instruments get. But yeah, the underlying is all corporate loans. So um, okay. with, a, with a very uh, low relative default rate and a very, very high recovery rate. Uh, just any just comments on the overall market here? We've recovered nicely from the flash crash lows. 
A lot of stocks are trading strong in the earnings season. Yeah. You know, some people sometimes, you know, say, the, you know, sometimes the bonds move with the market. Sometimes they move contrary to the market. Just, you know, yeah. any, you know, from what you're seeing here in, in you know, in the bank loan market, bond market, uh, you know, any, yeah. any take on the overall market? Sure, yeah. You know, our, our views were going to keep sort of chugging along sideways for the most part. I think there are pockets of uh, potential risk out there, including, you know, we're in Dallas, so, um, you know, we are very sensitive to the energy sector down here. Um, you know, we might see some default rates in that sector uh, increase dramatically. I think one of the good things about bank loans, though, is the bank loan uh, overall market only has it's a little less than five percent exposure to energy relative to high yield bonds, which uh, are almost twenty percent uh, exposed to to energy uh, bonds. So that's another reason to like bank loans is that from a sector perspective, um, we're underweight the right uh, the right sectors in today's market. When you look at potential defaults going forward, uh, but for the most part, you know our view is that uh, the domestic economy will continue to sort of muddle along. Uh, choppy risk asset markets, um, uh, and so you have to be selective on where you're getting risk in your portfolio and make sure you're uh, getting rewarded for that risk and, and pay attention to things like sharp ratio. We've been on the line with Ethan Powell, Chief Product Strategist for Highland Capital Management. Take a look at uh, his ETF, SNLN. Ethan, great information on the markets, on the bond market, bank loan market. We appreciate you coming on and like to have you on again. Super, Joel. Would love it. Take care.